Gail, thank you, you can hear me. Brilliant. Right, I haven't got a lot of time, so I'm just going to crack on. Basically, I posted this card on my blog and I knew that I liked it and I thought that you might all like it. And I said in the blog post that if anybody wanted to see how I made it, I'd try and do a live stream on it. And as I've been away from the live streams for a few weeks, I thought I'd come on this morning and show you how to do it. Now, I just want to say straight off, it wasn't my idea. I saw this idea on Pinterest and it reminded me at the time of a card that I made previously, which I posted in my blog post. So I'm going to show you today how I made it. It's all done directly on the machine. Um, nothing to do with canvas, this, and it's minimal supplies. So basically, I've got a base card which mine was um, UK A4, which I think is eight and a quarter, something like that by 11 and three quarters. So you could adapt this if you're using eight and a half by 11. Um, so that's my base card, just cut in half and scored and folded. And then this white matting layer, just got some notes here, for my, to fit my size base card, is five and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Again, you just cut yours accordingly. It, you know, it's supposed to be kind of a, about a quarter of an inch smaller, but you can do whatever you want. And the stamps I used on mine was a Stampin' Up stamp set called Flower Patch, but you can use anything. I mean, you could, if you've got um, dots or stripes or any other kind of flowers, I think smaller patterns work best. But again, just play around with it and try it. And just to save some time, I've got all my colours and all my ink pads here ready. So I'm hopefully going to try and show you how I did the whole thing. So that's the card. So the first thing I did in Scan and Cut Canvas was came to the patterns. Try and bring my machine a little bit nearer so you can see. And I chose a basic shape and I chose a rectangle. Now, because of the, the technique I'm going to use, I needed my rectangle to be big enough to, to house my letters and room for like over stamping. So I chose a rectangle that was six inches wide by four inches high. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Just go into the width, change it up to about six. This bit isn't vital. and it's 6.07 there which gives it a 4.27 high so that's fine and I'm going to say set so that's going to be used in a few minutes now the next thing I did because I wanted my letters to fit on this matting layer I created a rectangle the size of that matting layer so I'm going to come back to add rectangle and this time I'm going to make it I know I said my base is 5.58 but I'm making it 5.75 just for ease to round round up the numbers so I'm making it 5.75 by 4 so again I'm going to take the size up to 5.75 then I'm going to unlock the maintain aspect ratio and take it down so it's exactly 4 and say set and this is the one we're going to use for our letters the smaller one so I'm just going to move that down there for now so now I'm going to come back to add and I'm going to go to the fonts and the font that I used was on uh, I'm trying to think which one it was now I think it was the one on page two top right and I typed the word happy all in uppercase so I'm just going to set it on the mat to have a look at it and make sure it is the same font yeah it is so this font now needs to sit on this piece of card that's 5.75 by 4 so I'm just going to place it on top in the middle and I'm going to while it's selected I'm going to come back to the editing icons and I'm going to come to the icon that's got the up and across arrow I'm going to untick the maintain aspect ratio 
and I'm going to start by making the letters two inches high. So that's because I've unticked the maintain aspect ratio, that's only going to alter the height of the letters. So they're two inches high now. Now I want them to fit within that four inch wide gap. Sorry, within that 5.75 gap. So I've still got the maintain aspect ratio unlocked and I'm going to take the width down. And from memory, I think I made mine about 4.75. You do it however you want, as long as it fits within your matting layer for when you come to assemble your card. So I know that might sound a bit confusing. So basically, we've got a rectangle the size of our matting layer. So the rectangle on the screen is 5.75 by 4. I've put the letters on it, which are two inches high. And as they are at the moment as a grouped word, they measure 4.75 inches high. And then I've got this bigger rectangle down here. So the rectangle that's equivalent to the matting layer, the 5.75 by 4, I don't need now. I was only using that as a sizing guide. So I'm going to say OK. And with that one selected, I'm going to hit the trash and send it to the rubbish. Now this bigger one, which is going to act as our stamped area if you like I'm just going to put this up here and I'm going to put the letters on it and I'm going to position it fairly near the top because I'm going to be stamping on the bottom half of the letters so I want an area here that I can stamp on and when you see it on the mat hopefully it will make more sense so those two are now positioned I'm just going to select them both by selecting this red box and say okay and make them a group and then they just move as a group now, I've already got my card loaded up on my mat and straight away I've forgotten that I need to do something else. So I'm just going to ungroup those for a minute and just with the letters selected, I'm going to make two and say OK and bring one down here out of the way. And then I'm just going to come back. I'm going to click one of these, use this icon on the left just drag the drag handles around the top two items, say OK and group. That's grouped everything, so I'm just going to undo that. So I just want those top two selected and I'm going to group them. OK, so the rectangle with the happy on are a group and then I've got a set of words down here. And say OK. Now I'm going to load up the machine and I'll have a look if there's any questions in a minute. I just want to try and get through this because I've not got a lot of time. I'm going to do a background scan and set the machine going. So has anybody got any questions before we go any further? Good so far, thank you. <laughs> um, right, so I've now done a background scan and I can see the two pieces of white card. So basically, this set of letters at the top with the square box around it, I'm positioning on this piece of white card here. And then the set of letters at the bottom, I'm just positioning on this piece of scrap down here at the bottom. I'm just going to go in there and just check the height of those letters again. Yeah, they are right. So, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to send that to the machine to cut. So I'm going to say OK, OK and cut. Anybody got any questions while this is cutting? Is 
Thank you, Gail. Okay, so that's finished. I'm just checking it has cut through. I'm just going to peel a bit of the card back. Yeah, it has. So I'm going to unload the mat and I'm going to just move the machine out of the way. Now, okay, so I'm going to peel away the waste from the bottom half of the letters. And I'm not too sure now whether I've actually chosen the wrong font, but it'll work hopefully. So with these individual letters, I'm just gonna take them off the mat and place them up here out of the way. And I have used a different font, but it doesn't matter. The font that I, I used originally on this is one of the ones that's more like a traditional font. So this one looks similar but is slightly different, but it doesn't matter, it'll work. So I'm just gonna put those letters there for now and get rid of the scrap. Now this one, the one that I put the rectangle around, I'm going to peel the waste away and I'm going to leave the rest of it on my mat. And the reason that I put it on a bigger rectangle is because I'm gonna stamp on this now and it gives me an area to stamp on without getting ink all over this mat because I don't want to remove it from here. So the way that I did this now, I just used post-it notes. So what you, what you want to do, you want to mask off the top half of the letters because you're gonna stamp on the bottom. So I used my post-it notes and I'll show you a close-up in a minute. But basically, I just put the post-it notes across the letters like so and the bottom of the post-it note is lined up with where the bar of like the H is and I've just made that a straight line and now I'm going to stamp on here and this is why I added this rectangle around it because I wanted to do it while it was all in place and I didn't want to stamp all over my mat so I hope that makes sense so now I've got a selection of, just move these out of the way. I've got a selection of stamps from the stamp sets that I showed you. And I've got a selection of inks and I'll go through the inks if you want me to in a, in a few minutes. But I just want a bit of scrap card for now. So with my, I've got three different size flowers here from this set. With the biggest flower, I chose my darkest ink. Now I'm just gonna, I've, I've changed up one of the colors. In this one, I used a kind of turquoisey green, a green, a deep pink, and a very pale pink. I've changed up this turquoisey green for a color called Blackberry Bliss, which is a stamping up color. And it's a deeper color, but it's quite dark. So I'm going to ink up this stamp and I'm going to stamp off onto some scrap and then I'm going to stamp over the letters and I'm just going to do that randomly so I'm stamping I'll show you a close-up in a minute I'm stamping so that I sometimes get the full flower and I sometimes get a half a flower on a letter if you can see so that's the first one then I'm going to come to the next colour which was the paler pink and this time I'm just going to test it I'm just going to stamp directly so again I'm just filling in the spaces really on the letters then I'm going to take the smallest stamp and go into the darker pink and kind of fill in the spaces again. It will make sense hopefully in a minute but this is how I did it. And if you think that there are places 
where you need to go back and fill in, then just go back and fill in as you like. So what I'm thinking I might do, I might use this small stamp and I forgot to get my stamp cleaner out. So I'm just going to, right, so I'm going to go back to keeping with the smallest flower, but the lightest pink. I'm just going to go back and fill in some random spots. Now, I took, I've got this stamp, I've had it years, it's called Field of Sky and it's just a, a lot of like speckles and Stamping Up did something similar, I think it was in Gorgeous Grunge and it might, there might even be one in Perpetual Calendar but a lot smaller. So I'm going to use this with the very pale green. I think I used the pale pink on the last one but I'm going to try the pale green on this and then I'm literally just going to stamp all over it randomly so I'm going over the letters and over the post-it notes now I'm going to peel away the post-it notes and put them out of the way I'm going to put the inks back because you'll know if you watched any of my stamping up videos I used to do in the past I would bound to put my fingers in it. So here's the moment of truth now, really. So that's how we're looking, if you can see it. So it's quite subtle. And now I'm going to peel away this outer rectangle, which has kind of acted as a mask for us. And I'm just going to peel it away gently. And then I'm going to peel off the letters. And I'll show you in a minute how they all look. So any questions so far? So try and bring all these back in so you can see them. Just trying to find some glue. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to glue the letters that I've just stamped on on top of these other letters that are cut just in plain white card and the reason that I did that was to give it a bit more stability so can you see so I've just got a fine tip glue pen and I'm just applying some glue and I'm just going to spread it around and then I'm going to place the stamped letter on top of the plain letter. And I find it easier to just kind of do it in midair. And then if you position your letters together, this is a silicone mat. This was by Stamping Up as well. And this just stops any glue from sticking, you know, to your work surface and that kind of thing. So I'll just try and show you. So there's the first letter now stuck on top of the plain letter and if you use a wet glue you have a little bit more wiggle room so I'm just going to carry on and do that and I'll try if I can and look for comments at the same time so if anybody's got any questions they want to ask me while I'm just trying to glue these together just ask me them now and I'll see if I can answer them while I'm gluing. Because this bit could be a bit watch like, like watching paint dry, couldn't it really? And we'll see how it compares because it is a slightly different font. You'll be able to tell in a minute by the P. So as I say, I'm just gluing the two together and I'm actually just using the spatula to rub them down. And I, I could do a bit better, hopefully. You see the P on here has got a little gap in it. Whereas on my original card, it's like the traditional font. So I'll keep going. And then I'm nearly there. I've only got two more letters to do. But I just think that when it's finished, it gives such a lovely look. 
um, and it's been very popular. I've had lots of comments on my blog and messages asking me to show how I did this. So, you know, people clearly have liked the idea of it and the look of it. I've got lots of ideas for future projects. Since I've come back off my holiday, I've been very, very tired. I seem to want to sleep all the time. But lots of ideas keep popping into my head for projects. So... I've been trying to record and make notes and things as much as I can so that I don't forget because I knew that I probably wouldn't have a lot of time <clears throat> after I got back from my holiday with one thing and another. And I did pre-record quite a few videos before I went, which are all scheduled to go up on my channel on Tuesdays as normal. But as I say, I've had... Um, seem to be getting a lot more ideas popping into my head since I've come back, so... I'm trying to make videos and make notes. So there are all my letters now. <clears throat> I'm just going to try and put this lid back on this glue before it dries up. Um, Gail, it is 5 to 11 in the morning where I am in the UK. <clears throat> And you just said it's 6am. So this is, there are my letters now all prepared. Now I wrote the word birthday with the pen tool. So if you just give me a few minutes to clear up or a few seconds to clear up my mess. This is the card now we're going to use as the base and this is my matting layer. So before I stick those letters onto here, I'm just going to put this back on my scan and cut mat, burnish the piece of card down and bring the machine back in and hopefully go and find the word birthday that is stored in my machine. So I'm gonna to go to pattern and save data and into the machine and somewhere on here I've got a file full of words. So I'm gonna say okay and it's this birthday word at the bottom. So with that one selected, I'm going to come into the editing icons, go to the red box, choose the first red box and drag the arrows up around all the words I don't want. I've shown you how to do this in previous videos. I'm not sure whether you can see. And then I'm going to say OK. Now it's selected everything and I don't want it to. So I'm going to try again, go to the red box, go to here, drag this up, say OK, OK, delete everything. And then it's just left a couple of random words. So I'm going to delete those. And this is the word I want. So now I'm going to say OK and do a background scan. Just going to have a quick drink as well. going to drag the word onto the piece of white card I can now see on the screen I don't know if you can or not and then I'm going to come into the editing icons and I'm going to take it down in size because at the moment it's nearly three and a half inches wide and I don't want it anywhere near that big I think this one was about 1.75 wide the one I did here so I'm going to take it down and you'll probably hear my chicken going off in a few minutes because it's nearly 11 o'clock and that tends to always make a squawking appearance in my videos so I'm going to say I'm going to leave my word now at 1.75 and I'm going to position it in the bottom right hand corner of this piece of white card and while I'm in here I'm going to turn the pen fill on and then I'm going to say okay and okay and OK again. Now before I go to draw, I'm just going to go into the settings icon and go up to the fill pattern and make sure it's on a solid fill. I have shown you how to do all this before. That's why I'm kind of rushing through this bit. You can always come back and watch the video. The, the live, although this is a live stream, it will be up on my channel. 
it's the, it was the technique of cutting the letters and the stamping really I more wanted to concentrate on. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to get my universal pen tool. And this time, because the dominant colour in the letters I've just stamped was a purple, I'm using a purple pen. I'm going to load that up. Put it in here and ask it to draw that word birthday for me. So has anybody got any questions? Jenny, all the way from Australia. Gail, you're all still good, thank you. What are my favourite pens for the scan and cut? To be honest, anything that will fit in the universal pen tool. If you've not seen any of my videos, if you go to the live, the, on my channel, there's, um, all my videos are in playlists. Go to the live playlist. And a while ago, I did a live stream on this universal pen holder. And I told you the pens that I use that I get here in the UK. But really, any... There's, that's, the, that's the chicken, the cuckoo clock. The pens I'm using today are some cheap felt, felt tip pens and I think these were from Morrison's, the supermarket in the UK. Um, but as I say, any pen. The other pens that are, are good, I'll tell you, are, you know, these Stabilo, I think they're called, the fine liners. These are great. You have to put quite a bit of tape around them to show you like a... Again, like I showed in the in the Universal Pen Holder live stream, you have to put a bit of tape around them so they sit in here comfortably. But these are great pens. I've used these pens for years and you can get them small like this or they do a full size pen. So these are good. And I think these are fairly universal to get hold of from places like, um, you know, stationer stores and Amazon and things like that. So I'm going to unload this map and move the machine out of the way. And then I'm going to take this piece of card off here. So because I put the fill on, now you can see that the word birthday has been written with this cheapo. Oh, you have the you cuckoo clock. They're funny, aren't they? My sister-in-law bought this for my little girl when she was about one or two. And she's just 15 now. And it's hilarious, but it always seems to go off in the middle of my videos. Anyway, sorry. Um, going off track there. So... As you can see, it's written it lovely and filled it in beautifully. It looks like a hand-stamped word that now, doesn't it? Just filled in with a cheapo felt pen from Morrison's. So what I did with this one, I, I wrapped some cord around it, but I don't think I've got any in purple. But basically, that's going to sit on there, and then I'm going to put the letters on it. Now, you can either... Let me move my junk out of the way. You can put the letters on flat or you, I raised these up onto 3D foam. I'm not so sure if I've got any handy. Um, I might have a few. Find an old pair of scissors and just see if I can. The font I use for the word birthday, I honestly can't remember. But again, I think I've mentioned it in the past in... Um, Again, on the playlist, there's a font playlist, and I'm sure I've mentioned it in the past. It's a font that I've got on my computer, and I made the word using the font converter, the scan and cut font converter, and then I just keep a file on my machine with all random greetings, and then I can just pull them off as and when I need them, and, and draw them at any size I want. If I remember, I'll try and go back later on and add it in. But if you go to the font playlist, I'm sure I've used this font in the past. So I've probably mentioned its name. So letters. Let's just see if we can layer this one up quickly. And I'll show you then how it's going to look. I'm 
just going to cut some very thin strips of 3D foam. And I don't know about any of you, but as I've got older, my eyesight's got terrible and I'm finding I'm having to wear my glasses now virtually all the time for close-up work. <clears throat> and uh, it's a bit of a pain. So I'm just going to try and put some foam on here now. I'm trying to do it quickly and I'll try and keep looking at the screen to see if you've got any questions. Obviously it could probably do with a bit more foam on the back of these than I'm using. But just for time's sake, this is how I'm going to do it. today. So now you've seen it done, it's a very simple process isn't it, but it just gives such a nice effect to a card. I'm just going to cut one of these in half. So has anybody else got any more questions while I'm trying to get the foam off here? Have I tried cutting fun foam? Um, <clears throat> do you know, I honestly can't remember. I think I may have done. I know I've cut felt <clears throat> and Hessian. Again, if you go to my channel, all the videos are in playlists and I would think it would be in the Scan and Cut Machine playlist because I think that's where the fabric ones are that I've done. So have a look in there. Is this the newest model scan and cut? Um, yes, it's the Wi-Fi model. This is the model. I so I'll get rid of that. So I've just put some foam on, probably not quite as much as I would, you know, I would normally use more than this. But just to show you. Now, I started with the word, uh, the letter P. And a position that, let's move this out of the way, so hopefully you can see this. I position that more or less in the middle and I didn't press it down too hard because I may need to juggle these letters about. But I'm just trying to peel foam, talk to you, look at the screen and do this all at the same time. So I think they may need moving over but we'll have a look. I wanted to obviously get the letters fairly central to the middle of the card. So I think I'm going to have to move these over and that's why I'm literally just placing them down on the card. I'm not pressing them down and then I can juggle them about and position them and I might want them a little bit higher, so I'm just going to start placing the letters now. I'm trying to do this as well so you can see it. But I need to be fairly close to it as well. Find my last letter. Just going to have to bring it in a little bit, I'm afraid. And then when I'm happy with the positioning, that's when I press everything down. We've got that one upside down. That's clever, isn't it? So I'll just show you how we're looking so far. That's how we're looking. So basically, this is all I did and I positioned them up. Now, to help, what I actually did was placed a ruler along the bottom of the card. I'll 
try and bring it in. So I'm trying to do this so you can see it, but I need to be able to see it as well. So I held up a, a ruler lined up to the bottom of my card and then I positioned the letters. And once I was happy with the spacing, that's when I placed, pre pressed them down. And I literally just lined up the letters with the bottom of the ruler. So I'll put them all in place now and show you. The Y is a little bit wonky. So there they all are now in position and you can see how you get this effect and then as I say I wrapped some twine round and I stuck it on the front of the card. So there's the original with the turquoises and greens and pinks and reds and there's the alternative where I've replaced the turquoise colour with this purpley colour. So that's how I made the card. And then all as I did, I cut a piece of white paper and put it in as an insert because I like inserts in my card. So that's the technique. So that was all done on the machine, just using simple text and a simple, you know, couple of simple rectangles. And as I say, by cutting the rectangle bigger for the letters <clears throat> out of here, it enabled me to stamp on it all on the mat without moving it. So that's, that's the card. So what do you think? Which one do you prefer? The green one or the purple one? So, I hope you found that helpful. <clears throat> if there's any questions, ask them me now, because I am going to go very shortly. Thank you, you love the card, lovely. You like the purple one, but they're both nice. You, um, you like the purple one as well. <clears throat> so purple seems to be the favorite, <coughs> excuse me, this morning. Um, I must admit, I still like this one. This one's going to my cousin, it's a birthday next week. You love the green one as well, Ronnie. Yeah, me too, I think. I think the green one's my favorite, but they're both nice. But <clears throat> if you've not got flowers, you could use this technique and just use any stamps that you've got. It doesn't have to be flowers, just random stamping. Because really, when you look at them, you know, you can't actually see that the definite flowers, can you? It's just, you like the green one as well, Jenny. Um, what's the name of my blog? Um, there's a, <coughs> excuse me, it's called a &H Crafts. But if you go to my YouTube channel, where you are now watching this, there's a direct link from my home screen of my channel to my blog. Um, but it just gives a nice effect, doesn't it? And it, it's a nice, simple card, but effective. And that's what I like. That's my style of, of um, card making. Um, I have posted a few other cards that I've... I've I, think I've I think I gave a sneak peek on my blog recently of some cards. I'm not sure whether you'll have all seen them. If you just hang on one minute, just before I go, I'll grab a handful. I think you may have seen these. These are videos that will be coming up soon. This is a little fun flip-flop card. Now we call these flip-flops in the UK, but when I posted this, a few people told me that you call them thongs, which I find hysterical because a thong in the UK is like a very tiny piece of ladies' underwear. Um, so that's one card. This is one I did recently that I posted. I think this was went live yesterday. This is another video that's coming up um, that's been recorded and scheduled showing you how to make this frame. And this is the side stepper card that lots of people have asked me for. And this is a video that's coming up as well that's already recorded. But as I say, since I've come back from my holiday, um, I seem to have lots of ideas spinning around my head at the moment. So subscribe to my channel, please, if you don't already do so. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. As I say, I'm going to have to wind up now because I literally have to go out in a few minutes. But if you've got any questions, if you just ask them me quickly now and I'll try and answer them. But if I don't, uh, thank you for this. My scan and cut is very new to me and I haven't used it very much at all. That's from Ronnie. Well, Ronnie, please watch a lot of my videos and I'm sure you'll find a lot of help. 
Uh, Bernadette, thank you. First time here. That's lovely. Um, I've told you the name of my blog. Sure, to, sure do. Sub oh, lovely. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so as I say, subscribe because that way you'll get notified when I do live streams. You'll get notified when I post a video. Um, subscribe to my blog as well because sometimes I don't always do a video but I do a blog post. So at least if you are um, subscribed on there, you'll get a notification when I post something on my blog. And on my blog, it's easy. You just at the very bottom of the home screen, there's a plus icon and you click on that. And I think you just have to put your email in. Oh, you've been watching me for years. Is that Millie or Mile? I I'm sorry, I, I missed it. it. It flashed up so quick. But thank you. I do appreciate it. And my channel is growing. It's amazing to think that when I bought my Scan and Cut and I posted a video to show how I made something, um, <clears throat> I never thought I'd get a few subscribers, let alone be sat here now with nearly 16,000. Paul Bailey, is that you? I think I've just seen your name flash up. This live stream is being recorded with my iPad. Um, and I've just missed somebody else's comment, sorry. Um, but if you have got any questions, as I say, just ask me them now quickly because I really do have to go. But I hope you liked how I made the card. And uh, as I say, I did have a lot of requests to show how I did it. And that's the reason why I've come on to do it today. Um, usually do my live streams on a Tuesday or a Thursday, but lots of things going on at the moment what with with work and other things my days seem to be getting a bit mixed up so I've just had literally an hour this morning and that's why I've popped on to show you how to do this if I don't get around to answering any of your comments leave them in the box underneath this video and at some point tonight I'll come back and have a look and I will try and answer any questions that I don't get to answer now so I think the questions may have stopped now so I'm going to say thank you and hopefully, oh, thank you, Gail. Have a, she, Gail's just said, have a, look, have, a, have a great day if you've not seen it and great video. And same to you. Um, hopefully, you know, you've got some inspiration and I will see you in the next video. So thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Bye.